When she took over the gavel, Speaker Pelosi claimed that they would be different. She promised the American public that they would work to get things done, that they would put politics aside for the good of the country, that they would be different this time. But we even found out at the night of swearing in that the new freshman came with one goal, to impeach the president. Then we soon found out, as they raced to see who would be the committee chairs, they campaigned on the platform that they would be the best committee chair to impeach the president. So we soon found their goal. This is the only thing they've been working on. But there's other things that we should be working on. Lowering drug prices is a goal that easily transcends politics. And there was a moment in time that we could achieve that. In energy and commerce, we had three bills that would lower the drug price where every Republican and every Democrat voted for it. But Nancy Pelosi, once again as Speaker, made sure that would not happen, putting a poison pill in so it would not become law. In the nine days, we'll be at one year anniversary when the three leaders came together to sign the initial United States, Mexico, and Canada agreement. Speaker Pelosi had promised that they were on a path to yes. How many times have we heard that? But today, in her press conference, she thought it was in doubt that they could get it done this year. I wish somebody would have given her a follow-up question to wonder why in doubt to get it done this year. I guess they were too busy with the only goal of why they wanted to win the majority, to impeach the president, because they can't do anything else. They continue to fail legislatively. They have issued more subpoenas than signed into law. This is not something that I believe these new freshmen can run for re-election upon. But let's, let's shift gears for one moment, and let's talk about what they have been doing, and let's talk about what we've been learning for the past two weeks inside Adam Schiff's committee. No longer the Intelligence Committee, but now the Impeachment Committee. No longer the normal rules of the House, but the rules under Adam. You get the home field advantage. You don't allow witnesses, and you get to control the time and not even allow members to share or ask without the first hour for Adam Schiff. But there's two things we have learned from all the witnesses. U.S. support to Ukraine is notably stronger now than it was during the Obama administration. So Ukraine is safer because of Donald Trump. Out of hundreds of hours of depositions, there has not been one person who heard that the president say there were conditions on the aid to Ukraine to see the weakness in their argument time after time, to look no further than how they have shifted their own accusations against the president. Remember what this all started with. There was a quid pro quo. That went on for quite some time. Then we moved to extortion, and now we moved to bribery. Why did we move to bribery? Because the DCCC finally came back with their focus group. But what was interesting when you listened to the hearings and you watched um, Congressman John Radcliffe, he pointed out on Tuesday that in the 3,500 pages of deposition from witnesses, the word bribery only came up once. And it was not in reference to the president, but in reference to the Bidens. Democrats might not be focused on facts, but Republicans will continue to double down on the truth and expose those for what it is a political hit job on the president. Chairman Schiff is playing by his rules and won't provide the president a fair process. Again, we have not had a witness that we requested outside of those that Adam Schiff has gone through his audition. We do not have a process where the president's own attorney could have a cross-examination. We do not have due process. And again, despite all the advantage to Adam Schiff, he still cannot come up with a reason to impeach the president. I know it's been his goal. I know he's taken this country through a nightmare for a number of years. I know he's continued to go to care for this so much to impeach the president that he is willing to lie on national television. Do we all forget just a few short weeks ago that Adam Schiff went on national TV repeatedly making the claim that the Intelligence Committee would hear from the whistleblower? that he would stand up to the president and the administration to make sure that whistleblower came forward. We learned later that his shift and his staff had met with the whistleblower, 
For now, Schiff decides the whistleblower should not come through. He claims not to know who this person is, but when we watch into the, in the hearings, he will stop people from answering because apparently he knows the name of the whistleblower because he thinks they might say the name, but somehow he does not know who the whistleblower is. I just think there's more to get done. The Democrats promised they would be different. They promised they would govern. But we found out from the very first day of swearing in that their true goal here was to impeach the president. They kept that promise to themselves and broke the other promise to America. We can do better. Open up for questions. Yes, sir. Sir, on Monday, the president tweeted that he would strongly consider testifying uh, in writing on the Ukraine controversy. Democrats were quick to call this a deflection of sorts. Have you spoken to the president about this? And do you think that it would be a step in the right direction for the president to do that? I've spoken to the president many times, but I didn't talk about this. Um, it'd be odd that the um, Democrats would allow the Republicans to have any witnesses. They'd have to change their course. I don't see what the president would have to answer. The president gave his transcript. What more would you need? Remember how this all started. Adam Schiff was very concerned that the president was going to withhold in some way, form, or shape a whistleblower from coming to testify. Her. A whistleblower that was not on a phone call. Well, now we have the transcript of exactly what happened on the phone call. We have witnesses. We've only been allowed to have witnesses that Adam Schiff has auditioned. Only those that he picks. Only in the manner that he can direct. And we found that there is no impeachable offense, that the aid was given with Ukraine doing nothing. So why would you continue to put our country through this nightmare? I know Adam Schiff's goal is to try to impeach the president. He will give up nothing. He will lie or say whatever it takes to get to this point. But I think we've had enough. And I think it's time to shut it down. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, a recent poll came out that showed that 51% of people in Orange County and 52% of people in the Central Valley, historically Republican areas, uh, support impeachment. I'm wondering if you can talk generally about the impact you think this may be having on Republican voters nationwide, and then maybe more specifically um, in your home state of California, if you think it's having an impact at all. Um, I don't know the poll you refer to. I'll just tell you the poll that I know of the people I walk through and listen to, my constituents and as I go across the country. The number one thing they ask me is, aren't we less than a year away before an election? Why don't they trust the American public to make the decision? The other question I get asked quite frequently is, how much is this costing? The next question that gets asked as we go through, when are you going to pass the USMCA to make the economy stronger? When are you going to lower drug prices? When are you going to do something about surprise billing? Unfortunately, every time we want to talk policy, the majority party only wants to deal with impeachment. I'm not sure what poll you have. And we, in Congress, it's not about the polls. It's about what we get done. And apparently, there's one side that's bipartisan, the side that wants to end the impeachment. I imagine the American public would want this to end as well. Because you name that poll, I just watched a poll all through the battleground states where impeachment had actually dropped four points. So I've watched the, the haven't seen it. Um, so I live there. I'll be home there tomorrow. It's not what I see on the ground. It's not see what I hear. It's not the input that, that has been about it. Um, I go back to what the speaker, who was also from California, she was very clear when people talked about impeachment. It was just in March of this year. She said impeachment is so divisive to the nation that it would have to be overwhelming, compelling, and bipartisan for us to move forward. So the Speaker of the House, who lives in California, laid out the three criteria for us to even move to impeachment. It has to be overwhelming, compelling, and bipartisan. So we had a vote on impeachment inquiry. There was a bipartisan vote, but that was to not to move forward, where Democrats joined with Republicans to say no. Overwhelming? You've watched the witnesses. You've heard the hearings. The only overwhelming thing we know today is that Ukraine is safer because we have a new administration. We also know that nowhere in there is anyone who spoke to the president that there was any prerequisite for aid going to Ukraine, and Ukraine got the aid.
compelling. The only compelling thing I see is that Adam Schiff will do anything or say anything to try to make the president impeached. Yes, sir. Um, why did the aid get released to Ukraine? Do you, do you know? I mean, it was held up for... 55 days. 55 days. You had, a, you had a new leader inside Ukraine. Ukraine is listed as one of uh, the most challenged countries when it comes to um, um, ethics and others. I've watched the administration that people looked at. I think you can talk to senators who had traveled there and went back, who met with the president. You can watch votes taking place inside Ukraine to have more of a rule of law. Changes were made. The president had those concerns. And that's why he was released. Why was the aid released? Should, uh, Democrats say it was because the the complaint was. Who says this? Adam Schiff. Uh, Democrats. Uh, so it'd be Adam Schiff, right? He, he is one. Of is he the one who also said he had proof beyond circumstantial evidence the last time he took us down this that he was found not true? Is that the same man who said he would do everything in his power to bring the whistleblower forward? Is that the same man who said he does not know who the whistleblower is on national TV and wish he did, but uh, he stopped somebody from saying a name? Because he knows who the whistleblower is, and his staff met with him. I just want to be clear. That is. But now so this is a new. Is this the same man who said there was quid pro quo, and now there's not? So now he's moved to bribery. So I was trying to stay ahead of that and just say, <laughs> why do you think you, Kevin McCarthy, think the aid was released? I think the president be, uh, had more confidence in the change of government inside Ukraine that it had been voted on the past. He wanted to be reassured that there were changes made. He was also concerned about. Russia's movement within to Ukraine want to be sure that they can defend themselves in the process. That's why this administration provided the javelin for Ukraine, where Obama provided them blankets. That, that is a defined difference. And any time we're dealing with taxpayer money, I'd want to make sure it's going to the, the reasons and what Congress had voted to pass the bill in the first place. Yes, sir. Harvey, can we have your assessment of Sondland's testimony yesterday? Because he was going into it considered a wild card by both sides. Did he acquit the president of these allegations, or did he somehow help the Democrats? And what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's very clear there was no quid pro quo. I think if you look at Sondland and the long, uh, the length of the interview, I would sum it up with one, one of the one individual asking him questions, Congressman Mike Turner. He asked him, "Is anybody on the planet tell you in the process there had to be a quid pro quo or any uh, anything with holding up the aid?" He said, "No." So. One question to sum, sum up the entire interview. And again, after that interview, you wonder why they continue forward. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we've heard a lot of different defenses from the president, some of which have been undercut by some of the testimony we've seen. But Such as? the hearings are done, what do you think is going to be the strongest and most central um, defense from the public? Same defense from the very beginning, the facts. The same defense from the very beginning, the phone call. And you don't just have one phone call, you have both phone calls. It's not somebody who heard from a friend. It's the actual facts before you. You've had all the witnesses, none that the Republicans have been able to request to bring in that Adam Schiff says no to. Not the whistleblower who Adam Schiff said he'd fight very hard to make sure that person testified. But only those who auditioned and made the cut. Take their best, the first two. You, you saw the questions. Saw the questions with Jim Jordan. Have they ever even met the president? No. Mick Mulvaney? No. Did he talk to you and ask you any of this? No. So why continue to put the country through this? I mean, if you pause for one moment, this is different than any other hearings that we have. We're talking about impeaching. We're talking about removing the highest elected person and changing the fabric of democracy. You should not take that lightly. Alexander Hamilton warned us about this. But now we're exactly in the place that Alexander Hamilton was most afraid of. That a party would use it for only their political gain, not for the rule of law. We've had so many better days in the House than what we've watched for the last two weeks. I don't think history will be kind to this moment in time based upon what this majority has done and lack of doing. Yes? So in reference to your previous answer, sir, um, Solomon did in his opening remarks say 
if there was a quid pro quo, the answer is yes. Do you genuinely believe that the president um, was not advancing his personal interests by delaying money from Ukraine? If you listen to Sondland, and every time he was asked, was there any conditions on aid to Ukraine, he said no. And he was asked how many different times. Um, during the testimony, it had been no. The Democrats' allegation of quick pro quo, bribery, ex extortion, no. Every single time, and go back to Mike Turner's question, did anybody on the planet? The answer was no. I think we have the facts before us. I don't know how many more people they want to try to bring forward. But every time they do, it goes right back to the case that the president did not make conditions, the president released the money, and Ukraine did nothing for the money to be released. I know the moment they got sworn in. I know the parties in the basement when they had their own personal friends there, when they told them what they really want to accomplish, that they wanted to accomplish impeaching this president. Nothing about drug pricing. Nothing about making our economy stronger. I know when they sat in a conference, they just voted on a, a new chair of oversight, but when they had those votes before for Judiciary Committee, where normally any Congress would take up impeachment, the platform for who they chose in that campaign, the one who won, his platform was he would be the very best chairman for impeachment. Not to deal with all the other jurisdictions of that committee, but that was his platform. That's why this is all they focused on for the entire year. But the biggest losers in all this are Americans. America themselves, we have lost because we were lied to. We told that they would be different, that they would work together. And in the moments and times that we had those opportunities in committee, the speaker changed it. So yeah, drug prices could be lower today. Yes, our economy could be stronger with the United States, Mexico, and Canada agreement as almost a year ago that was agreed to. And not only would our economy be stronger, we'd be stronger as a nation when we negotiate with China, who's now become our number three trader, when Mexico and Canada is number one and number two. But no, we're weaker today in that negotiation simply because the speaker won't bring this up because she's too busy with impeachment. Today, we're waiting on the Senate to pass another continuing resolution, the funding of government themselves. We haven't gotten that done. But we've got more hearings on impeachment. We've got a deficit. The number one thing a majority should do is pass a budget. But they didn't even get that done. We're almost on a one-year anniversary. Name me one problem that the Democrat majority has solved. They've created a few more, but they have not solved anything. I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving.